now we're going to unhook uh, the 250 off the air drill and hook it up to the case turbo tow and do some do ghost work up uh, some organic route. That's how we get tires off. <laughs> I'm on Six Nations Reserve. Uh, basically, uh, we got this field about four or five days ago. We farmed right beside it, and it's only 10 acres, but it's never been farmed for eight years, so it's been empty. So I thought it would be great to turn it into uh, organic land because it hasn't had any chemicals on it. We ripped it up last night, and we're just ripping it up again today. So I actually really do like this kind of ground because, first of all, I'm not taking land from my neighbors. When I first started farming, I had ground I would get and it would be farmed from 10 other farmers and the ground quality in the fertilizer and the organic matter was just pretty much nothing there. And I used to get poor yields for that's what would happen. So this kind of ground is very nice loamy and I like things rotting. So it's nice to work over that green material and, and get it all in and leave it, let it rot, hit it again with the turbo toe, mix it up, let it rot again. You know, I'd rather farm 50 acres and get 45 bushels instead of farm 100 acres and get uh, uh, 15, 15, 20 bushels. It's just, it's, just, it's just affordable and it works. This year has been very dry. We've, we started irrigating some of the, the market garden because it's so dry. With the land we have, um, this bit, this five, 10 acres here we got, I thought it would be, uh, interesting or cool to try and do an organic market garden here and it is hard uh, keeping up on it we've had four or five family members helping um, so basically I figured to turn it into growing um, vegetables and it's my first year I'm gonna see how it works out we have some tomatoes we have garlic uh, onions we have squash um, we have watermelons down there. Really nice. It's really good dirt. Um, we had to replant some of the stuff just because the weeds came in so fast and we couldn't get uh, control of it. So we've been rototilling in between the rows, but some of the rows had to get replanted. Irrigated yesterday on this. The dirt's nice and wet. So my pretty much my biggest goal with the sweet corn is I want to do at least well, I like to do 100 acres of sweet corn. I, I like to I like to get into the wholesale, right? Like I like the cash, and uh, I think there's I just think it's better to have different crop uh, varieties and just different rotations and just something else to do in the summertime, right? In the summertime, all I grow is winter wheat. I just like to do something else, and I like to get into the wholesale. Like I wouldn't want to go too much over 100 acres, but fix up the barn and have an actual store where people can buy actual. Uh, local stuff once I get a customer base going and then people actually want to like know me and will come far away then I'll grow like a lot that's why I bought this picker <laughs> uh, this is an oxbow CP 100 corn puller it's not called a corn picker it's called a corn puller because it pulls the corn off the stock so it doesn't get damaged the ends don't get damaged the top of the stock goes in here and the bottom of the stock gets cut off then it goes through those two rollers and it pulls the cob off. Then it falls onto the next tray and then gets dumped into a trailer. It's a big game changer because um, having two stands, we need to keep up with the corn and that's the only way to do it. Unless you have 10 kids. <laughs> so I'm excited to use it this year. I never used one and this one looks pretty sick so I'm excited to use it. Hey, Shane. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. How you doing? So you were now in the sweet corn. Day yeah, day. yeah, yeah. No, I'm in there. I'm, that's what I'm doing <laughs> now. Yeah. My name is Rob Manning. I'm the uh, business and lending advisor for the Grand Erie Business Center. We're based out of uh, Cayuga, Ontario, and we're one of uh, over 200 community futures development offices throughout the country. Here we have clients such as, uh, as Shane McLeod, and again, our, our mandate is to assist in whichever way we can. And again, our success is measured by the success of our clients. So Shane, you, you know, you've invested all this extra time and effort and energy into sweet corn. Yes. Um, you know, thousands of dollars of crop inputs. Yes. So is this something you're gonna to continue to embark on in the future or is there something you're gonna change? I'm gonna keep going, but this year I kinda of got ahead of myself and I planted too much. 
And uh, but you know, I'm still I'm still going to do it. I don't think I need as much as I planted this year. I just have to plant it and space out the planting better. Right. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to keep going. So would you be kind of doing like doing two acre? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing yeah. Rather than yeah. one big yeah, blast. Yeah, we're, we're going to stick to just two varieties. Um, and we're going to do yeah what you pretty much just said. We're going to do about eight acres next year and go two two acres. Wait a couple weeks, two acres. Wait a couple. Always um, better to sell out than to have waste. Water, yeah, right? right now we've been donating a lot. Salvation Army and Good Shepherd. So, you know, you've gotten into this sweet corn thing, and I mean, it's, it's certainly, you're dealing, it's different because you're dealing now with the, the end user. Yes. Right? Whereas, what types of corn are you actually, types Pe of sweet pe corn? Peaches and, and cream. And then, I mean, peaches and cream was always big. There's but there's a few uh, um, different varieties, like ser Serpentipity, there's Delectable, there's two, those are the two main ones that we use, but they're all peaches and cream. Most people, when they come back, they don't know that. They just ask for peaches <laughs> and cream, right? Yeah. But we're using, uh, a new corn that came out. We only did about three acres with it, and that's the stuff we're cutting right now that stays sweeter. Cobs are a bit shorter. It's peaches and cream, but it's madly sweet. That's what people are. We have return customers now the last two, three years, and that's that's what they're coming for. But I, I do love uh, interacting with people and getting to see what people want. It goes back to my snowplow stuff and even my farming stuff. Like I didn't come from a farm background. I started out with pretty much nothing. I started out with credit card debt. I, I didn't have any money. And uh, I, I'm a people's person. I think of Shane's uh, strengths is, is uh, he's committed, he's a ton of energy, um, he's passionate about what he's doing, and he comes from the school of hard knocks. So in other words, he's lived it. He's not just book smart, he's life smart. What's, what's in, the in the future for you? What are you, you going to do something different? You know when you go to a pop machine and you put a dollar in, mm -hmm. and you pick what pop you want and it comes out at you? Yeah. It pretty much be like that. Like it's, 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 it's gonna be cool. The corn will be in a cool oh, okay. area contained. Right. The other thing I like to do is I like to keep the corn stand open uh, 24 hours a day. Right. Because you know, Catch with people the South driving serve, home. Um, from people coming from Dover, people stop at the farm at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And uh, they buy corn every, every day, seven days a week. No problem, you want corn at one o'clock in the morning? Come on over. Make you sure you have some. it pre-cooked for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's just fantastic that you've created something out of basically nothing. Yeah, right? yeah. You start, yeah. like you said, you yeah. started with a $10,000 yeah. line uh, credit card yeah, and yeah. A, an old truck and a blade, right? Yeah, yeah, And now yeah. Look, where, look where you are now. Yeah. A successful business. Yeah. You got a growing family. Yeah. And look at you're happy. Yeah, yeah, no, I got, I got a hot wife and I, I got a good and, and this is post COVID. So, yeah. how many stories do we have that are yeah, like that? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So again, yeah. well done. Yeah, no problem. All Thank right. you. Good job, yeah, no, sir. I appreciate it. I'm not sure what people like about it. What I like about it is I like the taste of it. I think people like it summertime. It's just, uh, I think it's a good food to go with, <laughs> with summer. I think it's a good food to go with barbecues. And I think the sweet taste, I think that's what it is. It's, you know, everybody loves summer. And it's on a cob. It's like old school. Let me, let me see if I can find one, because he plants them deep. It might take me a sec to find this. It might be an inch and a half deep. <laughs> I don't like, uh, I hate searching for sweet corn. It is so hard. I'm like, man, because the seeds are a lot smaller than regular corn. One, two, three. So here's one here, and you can see the sprout is on it. It sprouted, and this was planted on Saturday, which was about four days ago. It's really nice ground here. It's really mellow. And it breaks up nice, so, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's coming along good. It's just hard to find this corn seed for some reason, but the other corn seed, I find no problem. I go into town, get some supplies and some parts, and uh, I'll be back. All right, come on, let's roll. Farmer is the man. Take a look, let's go over to the truck. It doesn't say where it's going, but it wasn't here because there's no there's no sweet corn growing around here yet. Pretty nice color. 
small cob. I can do better than this. I can do a lot better. 